Santa Maggio and we will discuss about Delta Robot. A Delta Robot is a parallel closed chain robot which consists of two platforms, the upper one that is fixed and the moving one on which the end effector is attached. The platforms are connected through three arms with parallelograms which restrain the orientation of the lower platform to be parallel to the upper one. The main advantage of a delta robot is its speed, since the only moving part is its frame, made of lightweight composite materials. Due to their speed, the delta robots are widely used in pick-and-place operations of a relatively uh, lightweight object. The uh, most famous uh, delta robot is the flex picker ABB delta robot which is shown in the following video. Hello, my name is Federico Casali and I will discuss about the kinematics of the Delta Rho. Let us start with the direct kinematics. Now in the three joint angles we can compute the elbow points A1, A2 and A3 and since the end effector platform orientation is always constant and horizontal we can define three sphere centers like in this image and then constructing in each center a sphere with the radius equal to the lower arm length then the solution to the problem will be given by the intersection of the three spheres as we can see here there are two possible solutions but the one we will choose is the one that puts the end effector platform above the base platform. So point B. Now the inverse kinematics. This problem is easier than the previous one because we can obtain each joint angle independently from the others. And the solution is given by the intersection between a circle located where the joint is and a sphere located in the platform. As we can see there are two possible solutions but we choose the one with the elbow kinked out instead of kinked in. The region described by the origin of the end effector frame when all joints execute all possible motions is called the work space. Here is an example of the work space for a given dimension of the delta robot. It depends mostly on the dimension of the base platform and on the ratio between the lower and the upper arms. If we increase the base platform, we can see that the resulting work space becomes smaller. And if we decrease it, it will be bigger. And the ratio between the lower and the upper arm will define the height and the width of the workspace. Hi, I'm Matteo Solinas and I will briefly explain the differential kinematics of the Delta robot. This can be analyzed from the first derivative of the three position constant equations of the robot and their resulting matrices. Nevertheless, these are very complex to derive any conclusion on where singularities may arise, therefore the differential kinematics can be also studied by analyzing the system with these different frames. In this case, O represents the center of the fixed base, capital L is the upper link, lowercase l is the lower link, and these are the joint variables theta1i, theta2i, and theta3i. In order to arrive to the Jacobian matrix, this loop equation is analyzed, and after mathematical calculations, we arrive to this equation, and then to the Jacobian matrices. In this way, it is possible to identify the singularities by analyzing the two-part Jacobian. Starting from j theta, putting its determinant equal to 0, these two conditions are found. In a similar way, analyzing jp, also these two conditions can be found. The first condition corresponds to the case when the two links are parallel, so when the pasture is completely stretched or retracted, while the fourth condition corresponds to the case when the links, lowercase a and i, are in the plane of the moving platform that is actually unreachable. Given a pose, the resulting Jacobian is equal to this product. The product J times J transpose describes the shape and the orientation of these ellipsoids that represent the velocity and the force manipulability of the end effector. It is worth noting that the distribution of the ellipses is symmetrical about three intersecting axes 120 degrees apart, and this confirms the positions of the three arms. My name is Andrea Colucci and I will explain the dynamics of the Delta robot. Firstly, we will introduce the Lagrangian. In it, there are two contributions. The first contribution is given by the kinetic energy and the second contribution is given by the potential energy. 
In the first part of this analysis, we will consider the Lagrangian as unconstrained. So, there will not be any constraints on the end effector. The unconstrained Lagrangian is given by the sum of the Lagrangians for each link. Then we will define the so-called aumented Lagrangian in which there is a contribution of the unconstrained Lagrangian plus another term that contains all the physical constraints on the end effector. At the end of this analysis, we will uh, derive the dynamical equations of the delta robot. Defining q dot equal to b, we can derive the Lagrangian written as a set of 24 first order differential algebraic equations. Now we will discuss about the motion control of a delta robot. The motion control is performed into the joint space. The joint space control problem is divided into two actions. First, the uh, desired path in the operational space has to be um, translated into the corresponding motion into the joint space. Then it's possible to track the reference by using a position feedback loop. The simplest control strategy that can be used is considering the uh, three joints uh, independently of the others and trying to control them uh, separately. The coupling effects are considered as a disturbance for the single joint servo. So, uh, this approach leads to a decentralized control structure in which uh, each joint is controlling and neglecting the effects of the others. In this case, the controller requires good performance in terms of high grid disturbance rejection in order to guarantee that the actual position is approximately the desired one. So, uh, let's assume that uh, the motor attached uh, to each joint is described by this transfer function. In order to reject the disturbance coming from the coupling effects, the controller requires a large amplification variant and an integrational contribution to compensate the gravity effect at steady state condition. So, a PD controller is used for each joint to control the motion of the end effector. Hello, my name is Thomas Hoku and I will talk a little bit about the simulation of the Delta robot that we have been developing. We have used Simulink as a simulation software with the help of the toolbox Simscape. On this window, it is represented the entire structure of the robot. And if we focus our attention on this section, we will find the input trajectory of the end effector that arrives to the inverse kinematic block. This block return as output theta1, theta2, and theta3 that are the joint angles of the actuators. For each one of these angles, there is a corresponding feedback control loop where on its inside it is present a PID controller, a saturation stage, and a transfer function representing the DC motor. Clicking on the scope, we will find as the field graph the angle difference followed by the PID output. It is here where it can be seen the importance of the saturation stage that prevent extreme values of voltage entering the DC motor. It is evident that the output of the motor are torques that enter to the dynamical model. We have chosen SimScale for the dynamical simulation in order to avoid solving the 24 differential equation that we found on the dynamic analysis. Inside this block, it is described the entire structure of the manipulator that can be automatically plotted in 3D by virtue of Simscape. Running the simulation, we found that the robot followed in almost a perfect manner the input trajectory. Isolating each axis, the following graph can be analyzed. The three of them have a transient period that disappear quickly in time and the state stereo pond has no major error. Finally, focusing our attention on how the angles of the actuator behaves, we discover a symmetrical pattern that is due to the symmetry of the desired trajectory. Mm -hmm.